You're watching InDesign Basic Training and today we're going to take a look at, in this video, Master Pages. And so we're working with the Pages panel. And this is an example I have from a magazine that I do on a regular basis. And it has multiple pages if you look through the Pages um, uh, panel. Uh, all of these are facing pages and then the very first page that's the cover, which is a right reading page, as we say. And uh, then I have two page spreads. Okay, so master pages basically are like building a simple template. It's almost like putting a template over an existing page. Um, you may start with a master page as a foundational item. It's very useful in uh, taking an item you want on every page or certain pages to appear in the same place and the same element on those pages and we can apply it. So your regular pages here may have a, um, a master page applied and you'll see in the very corner of each of the page which uh, master item and those master pages are up at the top here um, showing which one is which. Um, and so you can apply whatever master page you build, whatever it is that you want to, to apply. Okay, why did I build a master page for this one? B master is um, actually blank in this particular situation. A master, if you double click on the master pages, now it's going to take us out of the regular pages and get us into the master page which is kind of again like a template. Now you can see here at the bottom of my page this publication I wanted uh, the page number and uh, which issue it is and the name of the publication to appear on the pages that I wanted them to appear. Typically most of the pages unless I have a bleed or some reason that I don't want to show that page number such as an advertisement page. Alright, so uh, I've put that on both of the pages as a footer, okay? And you're gonna see this, um, typically the items, these frames, you can see that's like a dotted um, line around it. It's very, very light, okay? these dotted lines around it, that tells me also that it's a master page. Okay. All right, so I want to experiment with um, something that we set up before. I have a page that we use to show text wrap, and then I added more pages. Now typically, uh, you're not going to have facing pages this way in this configuration where I've got a right-hand page, then a spread, and then a left-hand page, which is the back cover, by the way. Um, if I have a booklet type of situation where I have facing pages, such as a magazine, I'm going to be able to open it. I have a cover, I have a, um, a back, and I have inside um, pages, a spread. I've got four pages because Building a booklet of any kind, whether it's a magazine that's 32 pages or 64 or 16 pages, uh, typically it's going to be in multiples of four pages. If you take a piece of paper and fold it in half, all of a sudden you have four pages. The cover, front cover, the back cover, and the two inside pages. This is how a publication is built. Uh, one sheet of paper folded in half will create four pages. And so if you need to put an, uh, an other page into here, then you're going to end up with eight pages, and then 12, and then 16, and so on and so forth. To do um, a tutorial on this, you might uh, open up a new page document and make it so that it is facing pages and add four pages to your layout in the Pages panel. Now, the Pages panel is separated into two parts here. The masters are at the top, and then your regular pages um, in the second section here. And uh, it 
typically comes with a master page that says none applied so it would take off any sort of template or master page information. Uh, it always comes with an A master which has basically nothing on it it's waiting to be built. So what if I want to have some page numbering and uh, this is typical of a task that you want to do. So open up a four page facing page booklet and uh, go to the A master and you can follow along or do this um, you can show this over again. Now I want to make the layout so that the margins and columns, if you put um, page numbering at the bottom, I don't want to um, disturb the margin here. In fact, I'm going to raise that margin a little bit. So I uncheck the make all settings the same and on the bottom I raise it an uh, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. It just depends on how you design it. Okay, so I did that to one of the pages. Yeah, I need to do both pages. Okay, so same thing. Uh, one, two. Click OK, and I've got a little bit better of a margin. I'm going to go to the text, um, the type tool, and I'm going to draw a box from one edge of the margin to another. And I like to use the margins as, instead of just placing something in the center. Um, I want to make sure it's in the center of the margins and so if I do uh, go ahead and um, use the text here and uh, place my page numbering in the middle then I could put the align center control on that. So now my cursor is in the middle but I know it's dead center because I've used my margins and it's centered within those margins. Alright, it's very simple to do this. Page numbering is going to go according to the way you have your pages set up. One, two, three, and four. Okay. And simply need to go to the type drop down menu and we're looking for a special character. So go all the way down to find insert special character. And you're looking for a marker. And we're looking also to choose current page number. You can do next or previous depending on what you're trying to do, but for the page numbering, current page number. And it's going to put a marker or placeholder. It's not going to put an actual page number uh, in there. So let's zoom in here. What did it do? It put in a capital A. Well, that matches the A master, okay? So don't worry about the fact that it's not a number. It is a marker on the master page, and it will work out according to your pages. It will respond in the actual pages. You'll see that in short order. Okay, I'm going to duplicate <coughs> the, um, that text box by holding down my option or on a PC hold down your alt key and then click and drag hold down your shift key as well and you can slide it over and duplicate that and put it in the same spot. Alright so I've got two markers on the master page and are they applied to um, the regular pages? Well actually they are and I don't know if you can see this or not let's zoom in here um, the, each of these pages automatically has the A master on it. I could take that off by putting none on there or making another master page and applying that. <coughs> so um, let's double click to get out of the master pages you're going to double click on the actual page itself or bottom left hand corner you can select a page. Okay double click on that. Now I'm back into the regular layout and take a look at the bottom of this. Alright, there is page one. Alright, and let's go to page two at the bottom. There it is, page three. Yeah, so I'm double clicking on the pages uh, by the way. And there's page four. Okay. Alright, so how do I make it so I make another master page and how does this really work? Well, I'm just going to do one more and you can continue it, experimentation. 
How do I change master pages? How do I make a new ma master page? So in the pages panel, the flyout menu, we're looking for new master. And I typically leave the prefix there for the B. The na name is still master. You can rename it, but I typically don't. Uh, do I want the two page spread? Absolutely yes, in this instance. It's the same size page as I have uh, been building. Click OK. And while well, you can see here that I am highlighting the master page um, over here. And so it's uh, the B master is highlighted. And so my, uh, my pages are actually selected. Okay, so I know I'm not in the regular um, area here. All right, so being in here, I want to put a, um, a, you know, a shape. Let's just put a shape in here. I want to maybe make it um, a color of some sort. Okay, that's fine. And we'll place it kind of in the middle. So uh, Alt or Option and Shift, and we can duplicate it. We'll put it on both pages there in the center, and that's great. Um, then I want to I want to do the page numbering as well on this. So I'm going to go back to my A master, okay, and I'm going to select those text boxes, copying them, copy, go back to the B master. You can right click and just paste in place or all of the modifier keys plus the V key. And it puts it in the same spot. And did you notice that it now says B, the marker says B, because we are actually on um, the B master. All right. So how do I apply the B master to these uh, pages? Well, it's a matter of basically dragging the master onto these pages. Okay, you're going to see a highlight around it. Now, if you click and drag and you see an um, up and down, like a vertical line, that means I'm adding a page. But if I want to change the page, like uh, let's say page two, all right, I'm going to let go. It was highlighted, and now page two has the B master applied. Okay, so. Let's go back and take a look and see if it also applied the marker, if it's still page 2. So I'm going to go to back to page 1. This is page 1. Page 2, yep, there it is. And in fact, we do also still have the marker, even though it was on a different master page. Um, okay, and so we can apply those as we want. All right, I applied a new one. Or you can make as many master pages as you need. Just basically, uh, most of the time, we're placing a, just a few elements that we want to repeat throughout the publication on certain pages. So do some experimenting, save this up as a template, and use it as an example so you remember how to do it later.